Hey guys, my name is Will. I'm from Ohio. OH. I did not vote for Donald Trump in 2016, and I'm definitely not voting for him in 2020. I'm currently an independent, uh, but I actually grew up in a moderate, cons uh, in a moderate Republican family. So from a young age, I was volunteering for uh, plenty of Ohio Republican candidates like John Kasich. Um, I wasn't a voting age then, but I supported John McCain for president in 2008, and I supported Mitt Romney in 2012. Um, the first presidential election in which I could vote was 2016, um, and being from Ohio, uh, my family and I were all huge supporters of John Kasich. However, I was utterly appalled when Donald Trump won the nomination in 2016, and not being a big fan of Hillary Clinton either, um, I actually voted for the libertarian candidate, Gary Johnson. In fact, I frequently tend to align with more libertarian values. This time, however, as much as I want to vote third party, I can't, especially not a swing state like Ohio. Therefore, I have to throw my support behind Joe Biden because President Trump needs to lose this election by a landslide. He has repeatedly demonstrated that he is completely and utterly unfit for the office of the presidency. Between the rampant racism and sexism, the rollback of environmental regulations, the sheer disregard for the law, his hostility towards um, some of our greatest allies and cozying up to foreign dictators, and more recently, his brutalist approaches to quelling protests and active attempts uh, to suppress mail-in voting. These are things that I thought I would never see from a sitting U.S. president. And the fact that the GOP, the party that I once thought of as my political home, has not only stood by silently, but in some cases has actively worked alongside this corrupt administration. Quite frankly, it just disgusts me. The GOP that I once knew is completely unrecognizable from what it was even four years ago, much less eight. I now want to take this video in a different direction than maybe what some of you guys have seen before. I'm going to explain through the words of the Declaration of Independence um, just how and why I think that this administration is exactly the sort of thing that our founding fathers fought for freedom against. And so with that, I'm going to demonstrate how these words are relevant today. From the Declaration of Independence, <clears throat> quote, the history of the present King of Great Britain, now President of the United States, is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. I'm not going to read every point here. I'm going to skip over a couple and highlight the important ones. He has refused his assent to laws the most wholesome and necessary for the public good. He has forbidden his governors to pass laws of immediate and pressing importance, for instance, COVID-19 relief bills, USBS funding, unless suspended in their operation till his assent should be obtained, and when so suspended, he has utterly neglected to attend them. This is the equivalent of the Mitch McConnell legislative graveyard. Countless bills have died on the Senate floor because of him and his neglect to attend to them, unless it's something that he thinks that Trump is going to like. He has dissolved representative houses repeatedly for opposing with manly firmness his invasions on the rights of the people. This one is uh, slightly less literal, but um, it can be replaced with I guess, the villainization of political opposition, uh, which would include the Democratic Party, um, or even Republicans who speak out against him, such as Mitt Romney, um, Larry Hogan, or the late John McCain. <clears throat> he has endeavored to prevent the population of these states for that purpose, obstructing the laws for naturalization of foreigners, refusing to pass others to encourage their migrations hither, and raising the conditions of new appropriations of lands. This is reflective of the administration's uh, staunch anti-immigration stance and efforts at making naturalization harder, uh, radicalized border, border control, and rampant xenophobia. <clears throat> he has obstructed to the administration of justice by refusing his assent to laws for establishing judiciary powers. Today, this would refer to the wave of corrupt judges appointed at Trump's whim and rampant corruption within the Department of Justice, especially Bill Barr, 
who has proven to be no more than just a yes man to Trump and and uh, and his and the administration. Hence, the obstructed the administration of justice. He has made judges dependent on his will alone for tenure of their offices and the amount in payment of their salaries. Just look again at Bill Barr, or even going beyond judges, Postmaster General Louis DeJoy, which I'll get to in a moment. He has erected a multitude of new offices and sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out their substance. Now, in this case, um, new offices could be replaced with maybe new heads of agencies uh, leading to the cronyism at the highest levels of government. For example, the Postal Service uh, being headed by a Trump GOP mega donor who owns over $30 million in stock in USPS competitors. Um, the EPA is headed by an oil tycoon. And the Department of Homeland Security is headed by actual neo-Nazi Steve Miller. He has kept among us in times of peace, standing armies without the consent of our legislatures. He has attended, affected, sorry, to render the military independent of and superior to the civil power. So while today's military, thankfully, um, is largely apolitical and it remains so, military, as mentioned in this paragraph, could be replaced with maybe modern police force, which has become increasingly militarized over the past few decades. Um, you know, you have things like um, you know, they own like the SWAT team, like they, they own basically, they own like home Humvees, they own armored vehicles, um, things like that. Um, the phrase without the consent of legislatures, uh, this is noteworthy as of late, given the fact that the Trump administration has sent dozens of federal agents into cities uh, without the consent of the legislatures within those cities. Those cities have come right out, mayors have come right out and they've said they're not welcome here. Um, furthermore, the superior to civil power part refers to the fact that law enforcement officers uh, frequently abuse their power, act above the law, and are almost never held liable. <clears throat> for protecting them by mock trial from punishment for any murders which they should commit on the inhabitants of these states. Uh, them, in this case, originally referred to uh, soldiers but its definition uh, can be extended to cover, let's say, political allies. Uh, in this case, Roger Stone, for instance, uh, who was convicted of a felony lying to Congress and subsequently pardoned by Donald Trump himself. For cutting off trade with all parts of the world. This one's pretty straightforward. Um, you know, the endless trade war with China and now Canada, it appears, and now Goodyear tires over something with MAGA hats. <clears throat> he has abdicated government here by declaring us out of his protection and waging war against us. The whole law and order president thing, you know, this also refers to the war on drugs, the war on crime, the war on terror, all of which have led to the United States having the highest rate of incarceration per capita in the world. He has excited domestic insurrections among us and has endeavored to bring on the inhabitants of our frontiers, whose known rule of warfare is an undistinguished destruction of all ages, sexes, and conditions. Domestic insurrections among us. Undistinguished destruction. In this case, <laughs> domestic insurrections would refer to uh, the open advocation for domestic terrorism against citizens, large-scale deployment of police, federal agents, National Guard, all using disproportionate use of force tactics against unarmed citizens, including but not limited to uh, orthochlorobenzilidine and melononitrile, or CS gas, rubber-coated bullets, long-range acoustic devices, or LRADs. Again, all against essentially unarmed citizens who are just expressing their First Amendment right to protest. This is all in addition to Trump's repeated uh, race-baiting and sowing of division. So needless to say, this administration is the most corrupt in the history of this nation. We must all come together to vote Donald J. Trump out of office on the 3rd of November, 2020. I'm going to end with one more tidbit from the Declaration of Independence. <clears throat> Quote, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. 
Thank you, everyone.